Welcome to our webinar on distillation troubleshooting. Tell you a little bit about KLM Technology Group. KLM Technology Group was founded in the U.S. in 1995. KLM is a technical consultancy group providing specialized services and equipment to improve process plant oper operational efficiency, profitability, and safety. KLM's core businesses, we do training, we have the Coleman's Handbook of Process Equipment Design, we do process optimization studies, hazard facilitation, engineering support, with our help from our key associates and friends like you. A lot of people ask me about the Coleman's Handbook of Process Equipment Design. If you've searched anything on the web, engineering, design, or equipment, it'll send you to the Coleman's Handbook of Process Equipment Design. This was the first chapter we did in January 2007. Hydraulic fluid flow, line sizing, and material selection. Training. KLM has a group of very senior associates and trainers that can assist your team. We teach in regional seminars, at your facility, and in webinars. We have a very large group of courses that we offer on the website. You can go to klmtechgroup.com backslash training. Today we're discussing introduction to distillation troubleshooting. Sometimes distillation course, sometimes introduction courses are called 101. So this can be called distillation troubleshooting 101. We also, we also offer advanced distillation troubleshooting, process equipment design and troubleshooting, refinery crude unit design and troubleshooting, ethylene, olefin ethylene unit design and troubleshooting, as well as other process units and equipment groups. They can be found on the website www.klmtechgroup.com. So what do you do? Introduction to distillation troubleshooting. Well, you do the simple checks first. Don't jump out and do something complicated. Do the simple checks first. So what's the first thing you should do? Verify the tower levels. Work with operations, confirm the levels. So I take an operator, he has a radio. We go to the bottoms level. There's usually a sight glass there with a level bridle. He radios into the op uh, into the board man. He tells the board man to open the bottoms of the storage control valve. The level should track down. We go up on the overhead receiver. We tell the board man to open the overhead to storage control valve. The level should track down. What percent of the time would you guess that when you go to a tower troubleshooting, they cannot find the tower levels? In my career, it's always greater than 20%, and it's always the tower bottoms level. If the tower bottoms level is higher than the reboiler return, the reboiler will not function. You normally can install a pressure gauge on the tower bottoms line and calculate the tower level. Row GH and tower pressure, and you can calculate how high the level is in the column. Many times you can take and lower the bottom's level to below the reboiler return, and the, re and the tower sometimes will start working. Level instrument challenges. The tower bottom's level will be frothy at a higher temperature than the level transmitter. Because of the principle of lever measurement, density times gravitational force times the height, the density has a direct effect on the measurement. In hot service, the tower, the level in the tower is typically always higher than the level in the site class. So you verify the levels. Next, you perform a tower pressure drop. You normally can place a pressure gauge in three places. On the top of the bottom's level that you just looked at the site class, on top of that site class, that the level bridle, you can put a pressure gauge. On the point up there, the on the overhead line where there's a P, you can put a pressure gauge there. On the overhead receiver, sight glass, level bridle, you can typically put a pressure gauge there. You should use the same gauge and you should read the gauge. Different people read gauges different ways, so you should read the gauge. If you drop the gauge or damage the gauge, you get a new gauge and start over. Then you can review the design data and know approximately what the pressure drop should be. Suppose you have 30 trays and you've looked at the pressure drop design and you know there 
should be a pressure drop of about 3 pounds, 0.2 bar. What does it mean if you have very high pressure drop? Well, you may be flooding the column. All right. What does it mean if you have a very low pressure drop? Well, you may have knocked all the trays out and they're laying in the bottom of the column. You may not have installed the trays back correctly. So there's the tower pressure drop will tell you a lot of information. What is the normal design of a heat exchanger? It's about five pounds, 0.35 bar. What does it mean if you have a very high pressure drop? Well, you could have fouled the heat exchanger. What does it mean if you have a low pressure drop? Well, there may not be enough flow going through that overhead re receiver circuit. All right. So if it, doesn't, if it doesn't have enough pressure drop, the flow could be low. In my career, about 20% of the time, you can identify the problem with a tower pressure profile. Once you, once you know there's a problem in the column, you can now scan the column to get a better picture of what's happening. Next is perform a tower temperature profile. You can take a temperature gun and survey the tower temperatures. You can look at the feed, the bottoms, the overhead temperature, reflux temperature, reboiler heat input, and the overhead receiver cooling in and out. These are all things you can survey. What happens if your feed is much hotter than designed? Normally, we want the feed to be about 50% vaporized. If it's much hotter than design, it may be 100% vaporized, and the few trays above the feed could be flooding. What happens if your feed is much colder than design? Well, again, you want it to be normally be about 50% vaporized. If it's all liquid, you could flood the few trays right below the feed. What happens if your reflux is much hotter than design? What you want is for the reflux to come in, condense, cool the liquid on the tray, and go down the column. If it's much hotter than design, you can just build up an artificial recycle around the top of the column and not have enough reflux. What can happen if your reflux is much colder than design? Well, you want it to come in, cool the vapor on the top tray. If it's too cold, you can condense too much vapor and you can actually flood the top of the column. What does it mean if, if our cooling water in and out temperature is the same? It means potentially you don't have, you can mean, first it can mean your overhead condenser is fouled. If it's clean service, it means you may not have the right amount of flow through that overhead condenser. If you have a low pressure and the low temperatures in and out, are similar, I'd go look at my reflux flow meter, maybe my reflux control valve, determine if I've actually got the, minor, the right amount of reflux that's going into the column. Do the simple checks first. Verify the levels. Perform a pressure survey. Perform a temperature survey. If you don't find any problems here, now let's look a little deeper. Sample the feeds. Has the feed change from the design. It could be that this new feed can no longer be processed in the existing equipment that you have. Build a mass balance. If it's not within 2 to 5%, get the meters calibrated. You can also do a component balance. A standard orifice plate only has 2% accuracy. So, you, you 2 to 5% sometimes can be a challenge. Performance simulation, you have the pressure and temperature profiles, you now have the mass balance, you can now perform a simulation. From that simulation, you can then look at the hydraulic profiles, are the trays or packing designed for your new conditions. Performance simulation, what simulation tool should you use? We helped write a paper in the October Engineering Practice Magazine. A team of six people rated nine different simulation programs. Many categories were rated about equal. One category where there was a large difference was in the time to complete a simulation. Some were as much as one-third faster than the others. The magazine can be found at www.iacpe.com backslash magazine. Training. We'll also have a series on introduction to process simulation, and we'll also offer advanced process simulation, Refinery process simulation, ethylene olefin plant, unit process simulation.
Introduction to troubleshooting. Do the simple checks first. Sample the feeds. Build a mass balance. Perform a simulation. Please email us with any questions. Carl at klmtechgroup.com. And thanks for your time today. All the best in your career and life.